Throughout history, the doctrine of the Trinity has faced serious objections, both logical and metaphysical. At first glance, the statement, one God, so three persons, may appear mathematically contradictory, even labeled by some as inherently illogical. However, this alleged contradiction arises from a category mistake. According to Christian theology, the unity of God pertains to the category of essence, whereas the distinction of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit refers to the category of personhood. Therefore, to apply a strict identity logic across categories, concluding one equals three, is to commit a categorical fallacy. When properly formalized within the correct logical framework, the doctrine of the Trinity is not contradictory at all, but surprisingly coherent. A sample logical formalization illustrates this clearly. In this formula, A represents an essential predicate, while X, Y, Z denote distinct hypostases. This states that there are three distinct persons, all fully possessing the same divine essence. The essence is one, the persons are distinct, but none of the persons possess any essence other than the divine. This is neither tritheism nor modalism. It is a model of ontological unity in essence and plurality in personhood. Quantum mechanics and Hilbert space, conceptual support for Trinitarian ontology. Modern developments in physics, especially quantum mechanics and the formalism of Hilbert space, offer conceptual tools that can help model the structure of the Trinity in more intuitive ways. Hilbert space is an abstract vector space used to describe the possible states of quantum systems. Within this framework, one could analogically say that God represents the entire ontological space, while the Father, Son, and Spirit are orthonormal vectors within it. These vectors have distinct orientations, yet they belong to the same underlying space. This visualizes the hypostases as relationally distinguishable, yet essentially inseparable. Furthermore, the quantum concepts of superposition and entanglement offer compelling metaphors. Just as entangled particles are not separable entities, but mutually defined aspects of a shared quantum state, so too are the divine persons not isolated beings, but co-indwelling realities. In this light, the ancient theological concept of perichoresis, the mutual indwelling of the divine persons, becomes even more intelligible when seen through the lens of quantum entanglement. Thus, to articulate the Trinity coherently, we must move beyond classical identity axioms, not by rejecting them, but by expanding them. The logic needed is not one that abolishes identity and non-contradiction, but rather contextualizes them within a multi-level ontology. To say that God is one in essence and three in personhood is not to speak nonsense. It is to speak in a richer ontological language. Just as in quantum mechanics, a system can occupy multiple states without violating consistency, so too can God manifest as three hypostases without ontological fragmentation. This Trinitarian model, unity in essence, multiplicity in personhood, is fully expressible using modern logic, metaphysical analysis, and mathematical analogies drawn from physics. As theologian John Zizulis has noted, the otherness found within the Trinity is not an addition to the divine essence, but a constitutive dimension of it. One final and essential consideration, God is love. But for love to exist, there must be another. A monadic, solitary God could not be essentially loving unless love were reactive or secondary. In contrast, the Trinitarian God contains within himself the complete structure of relationality. The Father loves the Son, the Son returns that love, and the Spirit is the bond of that divine reciprocity. This makes the tri-personal God not just a theological claim of faith, but a metaphysical necessity for love to be structurally eternal. Hence, the Trinity is not merely a mystery to be accepted, but a reality to be understood, a unity that is not solitude, and a plurality that is not division. In conclusion, the Trinity is neither illogical nor obscure, when framed within proper categories and supported by the conceptual resources of logic, metaphysics, and even physics. It reveals the nature of ultimate being as simultaneously one and relational, grounded in essence, but manifest through personal communion. 
Far from being an irrational doctrine, the Trinity emerges as a structural revelation of a God who is, in his very essence, eternally and necessarily love. 